That's cheating. <laughs> Hey, it's Norm. And it's Adam. Adam, you know, when we were at your office, you showed us a couple of prints you had from Shapeways. Yes. A couple of kits of these. Yes. And these are the, the Strandbeast. These are from a Dutch artist named Theo Janssen. And this is a 3D printed Strandbeast. Uh, it's hard to make it work on a surface like this, but it, it walks. Uh, and he makes these things out of PVC and surgical tubing, and they, they're wind powered and walk along the beaches in Holland. Strandbeast means beach. Beast, I think. I think so. Yeah. It, they're. I'm obsessed with them. I love them. And, and there's when you when you say you make them on PVC, they're massive. They're, they're ma like they're like 20 feet high and like 60 feet long. They look gigantic. And some of them actually even store wind power in two liter soda pet bottles and like gather up wind energy and then walk for a little while and then gather up more wind energy and walk for a little while. They're they're incredible. Um, and they're all based on a mathematical formula that he worked out years ago on a relationship between these 12 struts that make walking legs. And most of the strand beasts that you can purchase are on these, um, have six pairs of legs. If you look at it here, you can see, and how do I put this? They're paired in pairs. <laughs> so uh, there's two yeah. legs okay. always in the same uh, same position at any one point, and it means they walk very nicely. So the, the 3D printed one is lovely as an exercise in printing something mechanical 3D yeah. all at once. But there's a Japanese magazine company that has released some kits, and I have two of their kits here. This is a this is a lovely illustration of what a strand beast actually looks like. So here's another one based on a slightly different design. Now imagine one of these built out of corrugated cardboard that's like 12 feet high and you have some idea of the kind of magnificence of the work that Janssen does. I would love to meet him someday. Um, and this company that makes the magazine has released a new one. Uh. <laughs> I just got it a couple of days ago from eBay. And this one, instead of having uh, six pairs of legs, has, has actually only two. It's a bipedal walking robot based on the Teo Janssen design. And this is something definitely from Japan. It's, it's, you say it's a magazine, but it's really yes. a box of pages attached. Right, with a magazine that includes directions that uh, intro to Janssen's work, pictures right. of his work, pictures of other people. articles about robots, and then a comic, a manga in the back. Exactly, by uh, lots of different settings, and then, uh, uh, oh, it's yeah. wonderful. And then in the back, there's the directions, which are all in Japanese. Did you buy this at the local store in San Francisco? Or no, 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 I ordered this on eBay. It cost about 80 bucks, I think. Wow. Uh, I, as many of these as they release is, are as many as I will buy. I love watching these things move. It's just absolutely gorgeous. So I thought, I thought that I would build one today. Awesome. All right, well, we'll let you get to building. Okay. And we'll see how it turns out. All right. Go. First step is, yes, separate the magazine and pull out. Proper knolling is super important to a project like this. Knolling is setting up all your parts in a nice square and even way, perpendicular to each other so that you can see everything. Um, with this, where there's many parts, some of them that look kind of like other parts, you've got to be very precise about what you put where and how. You can't mess it up. Uh, and so this is a, uh, a really nice method for being able to see everything. How you start really affects how it will go because many things are not bilaterally symmetrical or not radially symmetrical. You've got to kind of get it all set up so you don't mix up anything. All right, so I think that's tool of shows. All right, now the instructions are usually in the back. One of these. Okay, 
So that, no? All right, so Wait. the instructions here, Adam, are in Japanese. They are in Japanese, and I do not read Japanese. Oh, surprise. But you've built these before, so how did you approach the first building? Because it's not like reading Lego instructions. Well, it's funny that you say that you use Lego instructions as the, as the, as a gold standard of non-verbal communication of exactly. building mechanical device. Um, these are actually quite close. Um, you do have to look at each drawing and see what's missing and what is added from the new drawing to the last drawing. Um, they're very assiduous about calling out little things that you need to know. Like if there's a if there's a two lobe uh, catch to hold this piece onto a spindle, it shows you in which orientation to put it on and then let it roll so that it catches. Um, at each point that there's something you shouldn't forget, they circle it. So they are actually pretty close to Lego diagrams in terms of how well they communicate. There are some key little bits later on where they have a, a, a plan view of the assembled thing before you start to add the final struts and each of the pieces is labeled. They're probably labeled things like the first one you built and the second one you built mm. and I can't tell that right. so I have to look for visual clues as to which one they mean. It's problem solving. It mm. is problem solving. Do you have to have, would it benefit to have an understanding of how the strong beast, the mechanics of it works before building this? Or uh, this is by far the most complicated of the three strong beast designs. Uh, it does help to understand that it is uh, a pair of triangles joined by a parallelogram. Um, once you understand that, this is effectively a Strandbis cut in half that is allowed to balance itself. And building the other two definitely made this easier. Uh, I have had some experience both with the people that have made these machines and designed these directions and with the device itself. And if someone was to buy like this kit, find it on eBay or one of the older kits, you know, all you really need is scissors and X-Acto knife and and uh, uh, a jeweler screwdriver, yeah. that was it. Um, I used the X-Acto knife to cut the sprue off of the sides of the pieces because a bunch of different parts came on a tree. Uh, I, you know, there's something like eight screws in here, seven of which you need to complete the kit. And everything else is relatively, relatively self-explanatory. Um, it's difficult when you're looking at a drawing as complex as the 3D renderings of this machine semi-built, it's difficult to see what you need to see. Mm -hmm. It's like at first it's just this sort of blurrying mass of parts. But as you construct it, and if you're, you've got to be willing to kind of unconstruct it and go back again to get it right. Even with my experience, I went down a couple of wrong paths on this. And in terms of model making in general, you, you said you want, like, one of the most important things is organization and keeping all your pieces before you start even. Yes. Uh, so I, I was always a Lego builder that I put my Lego parts out. I did some serious knolling with my Lego parts so that I never had to look for stuff. Um, it's actually one of the places I'm least forgiving with my children when they're building Legos. They always come to me 20 minutes in and they go, I can't find this one part. And I'm like, oh, I, and I come down and I Lego go. Lego is never wrong. If one in I, a million. They're never wrong. And I also, I also do this with my kids. I'm like, if I come down there and I find the part, <laughs> if I come down there and I find the part in less than 30, no, I guarantee them. Go look again because I guarantee you I'll find that part in 30 seconds or less. And they're like, you won't find And I go, boop, I find it right away. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot of recognition, shape recognition, pattern recognition. And yeah, this is much easier to build when you have all the parts laid out in front of you. There are many parts that look kind of similar to each other and you really have to search to make sure you're putting the right part in at the right time. So again, gnawing before you start, totally critical. Is this a kit you recommend to someone just getting started in model making? Uh, I'd say it's a little bit advanced for someone just getting started with model making. There's a lot of mechanical stuff going on. I, I would actually say this kit is the One easier of the older one. ones with, with the, the full older, six pairs. Yeah, and the, it's really clear what's going on in this. It's it's not quite as clear. Um, the movement is also more subtle, so it's hard to turn the things and see that you're on the right path. The actual movement in the end is really subtle. Wow. Oh, that is so cool. All right, so here it is. It's, it's finished. Done. 45 it's minutes later. You, right, as, as you said. I said it was 45 minutes. I came in at what, like 43? And it's <laughs> gorgeous. So you're, we're playing with it a little earlier. This moves unlike any of the other strong beasts. That you well, have. so if you look at this one here, and you watch it move. Oh, I crashed them into each other. You'll notice the, the mechanism is 
this one leg repeated 12 times. Mm. So this is exactly half of, this is exactly one of the legs only repeated on one side. So it's effectively a Stonebees cut in half. It looks like they've even used some of the same uh, injection moldings from this kit right. to actually make this kit. So if you watch this go, um, now it walks into the wind so I can't blow it too hard. Yeah, there you go. And what, what I find I really like about it is the, um, the shifting of the weight. Yeah, it goes from left to oh. right and the feet yeah. actually move up and down. The feet move up and down and they actually turn. They, they There's tilt. a lot of mechanical brilliance going on in here that's, that's hard to see upon first glance. Um, making robots that are fully bipedal is totally non-trivial. The movies would lead you to believe that it's easy, but, it's, but it ain't. Weight and balance and center of gravity. Right, they've got to move their balance each time they step, and that's very, very difficult. Uh, this is just beautiful. It is totally different than these other three. And the way it works, just to explain it again, is that it's a one big fan. It's gear reduced all the way down so that the two gears here, mm -hmm. they rotate slowly relative to the, the, the bigger fan. Right, and they allow something as light as a gentle breeze to actually drive mm -hmm. the mechanics of this whole thing. Wow. Um, and in that, now it's walking backwards. Ah. <laughs> uh, in that, I think they really follow in the in the in the spiritual footsteps of Teo Janssen's real strong beasts. I I would imagine he's very pleased about this. And it's so cool because in the magazine that this came along with, there are even expansions, upgrades you can make. People have battery powered them. They have added shoes and hands and character heads. Uh, they have made their reciprocation operate on different principles. It's, it's really awesome how far these magazines go. And each of them involves really radical departures from the kit as built in order to kind of give you places to go. I think you just go on eBay, search biped walking robot, and maybe there uh, might it, be one. If you search on eBay Strandbeast, this is where you'll find, this is, these, these are the kits that you'll find right away. Well, awesome. You yeah. got to put office, definitely something for your office. Absolutely. I actually know I'm devoting a whole shelf in the cave cabinets to the Strong Beasts. Uh, I now have five of them, so uh, I think they can get their own shelf. Amazing. So we'll come back and we'll have more of you building one day builds on Tesla.com and more photos and stuff uh, there as well. Thank you, Adam. Thanks, Storm. We'll see you guys next time. See you next time. Bye.